Alexander disease is a rare neurological disorder that primarily affects the white matter of the brain. If we look at a cross-section of the brain, we can easily distinguish between two tissue types. First is white matter, which is the area responsible for transmitting signals between different brain regions, and gray matter. Gray matter contains nerve cell bodies. White brain matter is made up of bundles of axons, which are projections of nerve cells that carry impulses. Axons are covered in myelin, a fatty insulating layer that helps speed up electrical signals. The production of myelin depends on glial cells called oligodendrocytes, with support from astrocytes, which are glial cells that have processes coming off their cell body, giving them a star-shaped appearance. Astrocytes influence when and where myelin is produced. They provide nutrients to sustain myelin production and release signaling molecules that can either promote repair or contribute to myelin damage. In Alexander disease, mutations in the GFAP gene lead to abnormal accumulation of proteins within astrocytes, disrupting their function. Astrocyte dysfunction triggers the breakdown of myelin and progressive white matter loss, resulting in neurological impairment. Alexander disease can typically be classified into three main types, depending on the age of onset. The most common is infantile onset form, which typically manifests before age 2. Infants often present with macrocephaly, or an enlarged head circumference, and have seizures. They may also experience neurodevelopmental delays, including motor, language, and cognitive development. Affected infants typically face progressive deterioration, with death occurring before age 10 in most cases. The juvenile onset form appears between ages 2 and 12 and generally progresses more slowly. Affected individuals often develop signs of cognitive decline, muscle spasticity, slurred speech, and loss of coordination, such as difficulty walking, keeping balance, sitting up straight, or using their arms. Seizures may occur, though less frequently than in the infantile form, and are often triggered by mild illnesses. Finally, the adult onset form is the least common and most variable. It can lead to muscle weakness, involuntary muscle contractions, spasticity, autonomic dysfunction, and difficulty speaking or swallowing, along with other neurological symptoms. Diagnosis of Alexander disease is suspected based on the signs and symptoms and characteristic brain imaging findings. In the infantile onset form, MRI often reveals extensive damage, especially in the frontal part of the brain. In the juvenile and adult onset forms, MRI findings may be less typical, making it easier to misdiagnose the condition as multiple sclerosis or other neurodegenerative disorders. Diagnosis can be confirmed by detecting mutations in the GFAP gene. Treatment for Alexander disease is primarily supportive, as there is currently no cure. Seizures can be managed with antiepileptic medications, and spasticity and involuntary muscle spasms may improve with muscle relaxants. Communication issues can be assisted with speech therapy, and individuals with difficulty swallowing may benefit from thickened liquids or modified diets to reduce the risk of choking. Occupational and physical therapy can help prevent contractures, improve motor function, and maintain independence. In some cases, assistive devices like wheelchairs may be necessary for mobility. Even though they're still in the early stages of research, advancements in gene-targeted therapies offer potential for slowing or even stopping the progression of the disease in the near future. All right. As a quick recap, Alexander disease is a rare genetic disorder caused by mutations in the GFAP gene, leading to toxic protein buildup in the white matter of the brain.
Symptoms include seizures, spasticity, developmental delays, and cognitive decline, with more severe cases often resulting in early death. While there is no cure, treatment focuses on managing symptoms and improving quality of life. Helping current and future clinicians focus, learn, retain, and thrive. Learn more.